Well, praise the Lord, everybody. everybody. <laughs> What's happening? Our, you know what this is tonight? Marriage Monday. Our ma- oh, I thought we was gonna go marriage, marriage Monday. Monday. <laughs> we couldn't be corny just now because we was out of sync <laughs> on that one. But well, how are you guys doing this evening? Amen. I hope you are well. I hope your marriage is doing well. Yes. Amen. Amen. But peradventure, it is not. Uh, It is my sincere belief that some solutions are on this line for you tonight. Yeah. And so we pray that you can just take the time to sit back, relax yourself a little bit, get your spouse, and sit before us tonight and see what God has for you. I promise it won't be a waste of your time because anything that we do share will either be for now or it will be for later. Amen. But it will be for you. Amen. Amen. You know, Pastor, the Bible says in 1 Peter that love covers the multitude of sin. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm-hmm. Yeah, 4, 8. Now, in relation to the relationship category. I noticed that we, uh, in our relationships, hold on to things and strongholds are, like you said on Sunday, strongholds take a hold of us in our relationships even. Yes. And they create patterns of fear. Yes. And those patterns of fear create uh, moments whereby we don't have correct intimacy with one another yeah because of fear right and so uh and what i mean by that is like that example when i bring something to you that i value and you devalue it Mm -hmm. by saying oh that ain't that ain't it or i do the same to you oh you just over exaggerating well, that hurt that you feel mm-hmm. is, a, is a is a blockage, is a disconnect. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Amen. And when that disconnect settles in, when it settles in, it becomes a phobic fear. Yes. And that phobic fear rises back up the next time you want to talk to me or the next time you I want to talk to you. Yes. That fear rises up and that rejection button is about to be pressed and when that rejection button is about to be pressed then we clam up and we tend not to share that intimacy that transparent that vulnerability yes yes. that we tend to have in relationships that you started off with at first yeah absolutely when you got married or when you were dating rather you started off with that vulnerability remember that think about this go back in your relationship for a second before we get into the message, go back into your relationship for a second. Do you remember those moments of vulnerability within the relationship? Those moments where you said, he really loves me, or she really cares about me. I think I can trust her. Yeah. See those moments when you said, ah, I ain't told nobody about this, Yes. but I think I can trust her to tell her this one. Or, I didn't tell anybody what happened to me as a female when I was younger, but I think I can trust him. Yeah. And you were dating at the time. Yeah, yeah. It's different things. I I need to tell you the way my father raised me. I need to tell you the way my mother raised me. You know, yeah. it's all these intimate details that we give each other. Mm-hmm. But then notice, in the middle of the relationship, towards the end of, and towards marriage within the relationship, we don't share no more. Mm-hmm. You yeah, follow me? We, I do. We're less intimate. We're less intimate in our in our intimacy. Yeah. And to our vulnerability for our spouse to see inside of us. Yeah, yeah. And I believe that comes with fear. Mm-hmm. And I would hope that tonight we can recognize our fear and our phobic challenges that we have, yes. our phobias that come up, and they're created by fear. Yeah. And I hope that we could identify them tonight squash some of them tonight and then create a pattern whereby we recognize fear from now on yeah that yeah. keeps us from being intimate yeah amen amen i amen. agree amen so let's get into the message tonight again welcome to marriage monday yeah marriage is a what divine institution, institution. who was it created by created by god, god. whereby how many two, two. Rational, free moral agents 
what gender, male, male and female, female, chooses to enter into a covenant relationship with whom? And, and almighty God, God to stay with how many? One, one imperfect, imperfect person. person. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, I tell you, that is the definition that we've been going by yeah. of marriage. And now let's get into the message tonight, shall we? Yeah. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Peter chapter 4. Amen. Verse 8. And from the NIV translation, it reads, Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Mm. If I was to read it from the New King James Version, it reads in this manner. And above all things, have fervent love mm. for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Let yes, me read verse will. 9. Yes. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. Amen. Amen. And so that Amen. is the scripture text that we're using today. Mm -hmm. um, first Peter chapter four, verse eight. And so it goes like this. What's wrong? Nothing. Why you say that? It seems like something wrong. No, I'm all right. mm. How are you doing? Fine. Mm. Well, I mean, you're not going to can can tell when something going on. So what's that? You want to talk about it? Um, no, I'm good. Everything's good. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, maybe if you decide you want to talk later, you can do that. Are you cool with that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, do you and your spouse have those conversations in your marriage? You want to say something past me? No, just uh, or. I want to add one more in. Mm -hmm. She gave the male perspective whereby how the guy usually responds when the wife is trying to get out of him or him uh, what's going on. She's asking these questions because she understands him and knows him. Yeah. Knows his moods and everything, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. he knows that she's asking because she's read him. But he still says nothing. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? He still yeah. says, I'm all right. When he's clearly not all right. Mm -hmm. What he's actually saying is, I'm going to tell you how to read this body language. What he's actually saying yeah, is, tell me. I don't really <laughs> trust you with the information. Mm -hmm. I don't really trust what you're going to do with the information. Mm -hmm. Not that you will betray me or something like that, but I don't trust that you'll take care of my vulnerability. Mm -hmm. If I offer you my vulnerability, I'm not sure you'll handle me correctly. Yeah. The other flip side is, let's do uh, the fem female side, the one where you all are kind of nasty and that's how we find out that Oh, when something's, something's wrong. wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, we so. got one real, real. Um, so I know for me. Oh, go ahead. You want to no, do no, it? No, no, no. So I know for me, like, when I'm trying to convey something to Pastor Kofi. <laughs> 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 and he like, I don't like your, I don't like your tone. You too hostile. Why are you talking to me like that? You can say it in a nice way. Yeah, well, what I'm saying is not the part where you write it down, but what I'm saying is the part where... Because uh, the writing down leads to that, but it's mm -hmm. for clarity for you. But I'm talking about those times when something has transpired. Oh, yeah, and you don't okay, know about husband? it. Okay, husband, something has transpired, <laughs> but you don't know what it is. And the only way that you know something is wrong is not because she communicated it to you, but because she acted it out. Mm -hmm. In other words, she was something funky in her personality or something funky in her disposition that day so when you talk to her she kind of goes like this um <laughs> did you take out the trash or you know whatever she may be asking you but it's got a sting to it and you're trying to figure out what did i do mm -hmm. to have her to talk to me like that the truth is you did something but the safe grounds for her to communicate that to you is not safe for her. Mm -hmm. So what she does is instead of verbalizing it, she shows you in her demonstration. You know you're a woman. You know you're a lady. <laughs> you know when something's bothering her because you know her like she knows you, you know her. But she doesn't say to you, well, I'm bothered by this and this and that and that and this, you did this and you did that. And I can't believe you forgot to do this. And she doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. Not every time. 
Not I'm talking time. about those, those times when she's quiet about it. Mm -hmm. And you think, well, since she didn't say nothing, maybe everything is cool. But she answered you with, about everything else with an attitude. And you go, what's wrong, baby? Nothing. Nothing. You sure? I mean, you sound like... Yes, you keep asking me. If I'm telling you nothing's wrong, nothing's wrong. Yeah, see, that's what <laughs> she says. That's our little thing. You're into our gate. You're into our backyard now. And so, but that's some of the things that goes on in relationships. And yeah. if she ever acts like that, what I now notice about our relationship, and guess what? Just because you notice something or know something doesn't mean you're going to not deal with it anymore. Right. You got that? So even though I know my wife and I know we just enacted a script in front of you, that's sometimes the way things are for us. And even though I know that, mm -hmm. I still might not actualize the the solutions of what I know. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we're familiar with one another and that's how it goes, right? Yeah. Yeah. But when she comes off like that, I now know there's something that she does not feel safe to convey to me. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Something That's is true. bothering her, but but I've not made it safe for her to come talk to me because we're not transparent. So mm -hmm. she feels like she has to bottle it up and that bottling up is what comes out in a nasty way. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. So and the question is, do you and your spouse had those type of conversations in mm -hmm. your marriage? Mm -hmm. Well, I remember because we do have them. <laughs> we had them now. And when we really look at it, the intent, I don't believe, is to make fear our enemy, much less each other. None of us do. One of the things that I appreciate about my husband is that the first thing he'll say to me is like, hey, I'm not your enemy like that, even though sometimes I might want to make him my enemy in my mind, in mm -hmm. my heart, I know that he isn't. Mm -hmm. So the fear of, of disclosure has ancient, ancient beginnings and, be, and it starts back with Adam and Eve yes. soon after their bad decision to what disobey God right in the Garden of Eden. Until then, nothing was hidden. Mm -hmm. The first married couple enjoyed a beautiful, open relationship with God and with each other. Oh, yeah. Key is with God mm -hmm. and each other. Yes. Amen. Amen. So here it is when you look at it, then sin entered the picture and everything changed. Mm. So on I mean hastily when you think about it, the clad the clad fig um clothing mm -hmm. that God dressed them with after they had committed this sin. Uh-huh. They the two of them actually hid from God. Why? As Pastor said in the beginning, in fear mm -hmm. of disclosure. But God, who knows all things, reorganized the result of disobedience. He recognized, excuse me, mm -hmm. the results of disobedience. Fear replaced fellowship. Fear replaced divine fellowship. I don't want to just say fellowship, but mm -hmm. it replaced divine fellowship. And the rest is history. Yes, it Yikes. Is. Yes. So the question is, what have you allowed? What have we allowed mm -hmm. to replace divine fellowship in, in our marriage? marriage. Yes. Is it children? Is it finances? Is it unemployment? Live chat and tell us. Comment on the bottom. Yeah. We would love to hear from you. Amen. Amen. So you see, what has transpired in our relationships, mm -hmm. that's what we want to discover. Yeah. So we're going to ask you to tune back in on uh, next week and we're going to dive into some of these challenges with fear of intimacy yeah yeah in our relationships i believe that we uh allow petty things oh, yeah, minor absolutely. minor things minor sometimes i say to my wife that's minor and she go to you <laughs> you follow me to you is minor to me is major but I be thinking, but it is really small. <laughs> like, in other words, I didn't go out and commit adultery or nothing like that. Those things are big to me. But she'll be mad at something that I consider to be small or vice versa. Mm -hmm. See, remember, it's all about making the platform comfortable for each other. Yeah, absolutely. And trusting each other with each other's wound yeah. areas. Yeah. You know, those areas yeah. that are sensitive. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes if, if she... If I share something with her, let's say on Monday, and it's something about my childhood or something like that, and then she 
brings it back up next month, but in a derogatory way, I'll feel less trusting in mm -hmm. that information. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. If she tells me something that she values that's important to her, and it's important, and it's one of them small things, and I belittle it later down mm -hmm. the road, yeah. then it'll feel less trusting for her. And she'll feel insecure in that part of our relationship, yes. and it'll cause a... It could cause potential bitterness to arise. And resentment. And resentment was the word I was looking for. Yeah. It can cause that to arise. So we don't want those things to start to transpire. So tonight, this very night, we, what we want you to do is we want you to take a moment and realize some of the things that you are um, or you in the past spoke to your wife, spoke to your husband about yeah. in confidence and it was trusting that you trust them and they held that information and they made you feel secure. I want you to go back and look at the fact mm. that you did have that in your relationship with this person. Yes. And now I would like for you to consider having it again. Yes. I want you to dislodge any relationships that you started external to your marriage and stop talking to people on the outside. I want you to stop tonight don't talk to a friend on the job about what's going on in your marriage. Don't talk to your best friend about what's going on in your marriage. Settle down, talk to your God about it, Come and on. reconnect with your God concerning that mate, right? And then I want you to recommit to being with that mate yeah. and being vulnerable with that mate again and trusting with that mate again. That requires a sit down conversation about transparency and disclosure, yeah. meaning I'm gonna come to you and talk to you about some things. You're gonna come to me, let us respect one another like we used to do yeah. in our relationship and let us get the results that we used to have in our relationship. Would that be okay with you? And if they say yes, then you both commit to working on it and allow God to enter in and glorify himself yeah, in your marriage. Yeah, absolutely, Pastor, and I like that. Um, and I would just say that it's okay to um, partner with other married couples who have healthy marriages yes. because we can encourage each other. And it's okay to receive godly counsel, wise counsel, hmm. as it relates to marriage. And it's okay to do marriage counseling. Absolutely Amen. okay to do marriage counseling. Right, Pastor? <laughs> yeah. Amen. 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 <laughs> and we're here for you. Uh, I believe we're here for you if you need us Absolutely. in that area. Uh, you know, up to this point, we haven't even offered that to them. But just understand that your pastors are here for you. And all you got to do is communicate with us in private. And we will make sure that we avail ourselves at some point in our schedule to meet God's needs for your life. Is that's that okay? Right. And keep God in the sense of your marriage. Absolutely. Well, listen, that's all the time we have for tonight. Our time is up. We thank you for yours. Yes. Listen. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, if you have not asked that same Lord to be Lord over your marriage, mm. not just your life, but your marriage, Hallelujah. then now's a good time to do that. Ask him to come in and save you and save your institution called marriage. marriage. Hallelujah. Just add him in there like a, like a, like a fragrant recipe that you can't live without. That's yeah. where God is. That's how our relationship is functional. That's how our relationship is successful. God, Jesus Christ, is at the head of our relationship. He's right in the middle there. Amen? Yeah, amen. All right. So listen, write us and let us know that you did that. We'll be happy to encourage you along the way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, listen, always remember, ILM loves, loves you. you. But more importantly, God loves you. Yes. Peace. We'll see you when? Tomorrow. tomorrow. If it be the Lord's will. It will be. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you.